I have been waiting over six months to make this. Oh. This. This is the CNC with me HD beginner set bit holder. And it operates in three very specific ways because I know that everybody likes to hold their bits in different ways. Six months ago when I first conjured up what this would all be, the community, the files, everything in between, this was the very first project that I wanted to do. I've attempted this multiple times and I really haven't enjoyed what I've created, very simplistic versions, but I always came back to this kind of design. Very small compact form that you can make out of a ton of different materials, but really focuses on the only three bits that you need to be able to use for any of the projects that you see on this channel. I'm incredibly pleased with what we've come up with, so let's talk about how it functions, but first, let's talk about how we made it. The material that I recommend for this is 0.75 inches, or 3 quarters of an inch, but I am using 0.82 inch material for this in specific today because that's just what I had laying around the shop. I used double-sided tape on the back and then I screwed down all four corners of the material and then I started loading up my bits. The really special thing about this project is that I wanted to use all three of our bits to be able to come out with our final product. So first and foremost, we're loading up our 60 degree groovy Jenny that is made by Cadence Manufacturing. Any of these bits are available. You can see them in the link down below. Use code Hamilton, you get a little bit off of it. But this 60 degree groovy Ginny is what we're going to be using to engrave our text. Even though it's very small, we still get really nice crisp text. And then it's going to go and it's going to chamfer the inside of an island that we're creating for the different ways that we're able to store our bits. In order to do that chamfer, I'm just setting everything up as a profile toolpath. So as I'm sure a lot of y'all know, I haven't had power in my shop for a few months at this point, and I've been using the X50 machine. I had forgotten how much I love the Elite machine, and the Elite machine is incredible. For some reason, I had like this weird little error where it wouldn't allow me to jog it after I ran the first toolpath, so I had to move everything over and rerun all of these things. I have no idea what happened, but I'm very excited that the shop has power so that I can start using my Elite machine again. Not saying that this is a bad machine. I spent my money on it. I've, I've done a lot with this machine, I love it. But the Elite, honestly, is just a better machine overall. So next up, we're gonna be using our bowl cut bit, and that is going to establish where we're going to lay in our groovy Jenny, as well as our bowl cut bit on the island portion of the tray, and then we are going to hog out the rest of the material for the tray overall. Now, I've got a little bit of a helpful hint for Vectric users at the very end of this, because as Mitz and I were creating these files, we realized a random difference that we would have never <laughs> come across otherwise about Vectric and Carveco and just one little thing, but we'll get into that later. Now that we've established our tray, the last thing that we need to do is load up our downtown Jenny, which is our quarter inch down shear bit. And we're gonna be creating the troughs that the shanks of the bits actually sit into. And then we're gonna be creating a bunch of holes so that you can put your bits upright or downright, uh, depending on the size bit that you're using. And then last but not least, we're going to be profiling the entire thing, cutting it out. After we've cut it out, there is a little bit of cleanup that we need to do, both with sandpaper, but also with our 3 16 inch roundover bit. I used that bit both on the back and the front so that I could get some really nice roundovers. And I really like that bit in particular when doing small CNC projects. I feel like it just matches up really well, but it's also the radius that the bowl bit has as well. So it kind of like brings continuity in the project overall. After we did that, I just brought it over, put it on some old cardboard, and then sprayed it with some lacquer because not only is it good protection, but it also dries very, very quickly. And after that, we're left with this, our finished project. But before we go into how all this works and the little tips about Vectric and Carveco, let's do our mystery file. Yes, it is time for this week's Mitz tree file. If you're confused, Mitz, who does a lot of the file preparation over on cncwithme.com, sends me over some mystery G-code. I load it onto the CNC machine, we cut something out. I don't know what we're about to cut out. We're about to find out together. Well, would you look at that? Paper towel holder. This is gonna be perfect for the shop. And I'm pretty sure that it's meant to be used with a half inch dowel, which I do not have any, but I will go pick some up just so I can use this in the shop. Great project, Mitz. And also, I know a lot of y'all have been reaching out wanting access to the Mitz Street Files, and I am not ready yet, but it's coming. We're gonna have like a section on CNC with me called the Mitz Hits, and then we'll have these available as SVG files with like a few toolpathing instructions with them. Uh, but I'm very glad that y'all are enjoying them. They first started off just being something to entertain people on the channel, like a little thing to look forward to in each video. But as Mitz has shown, he is incredibly creative and he's been making some really awesome projects. 
and I definitely want to be able to showcase them and we're figuring out a way. So thank you for your patience and thank you Mitz for this week's Mitz Tree File. And without further ado, here is our completed project. It's extremely small and I first and foremost want to talk about the differences between Carco and Vectric that we found out. Now, when setting up these vectors, I have an island inside of an outside profile. And I went ahead and just edged that island up so that it's just shy of being half of an inch because that's what we use our bull bit for. The bull bit comes in here and it cuts until it bottoms out and it realizes that it's no longer half of an inch in that channel and then it comes back out. I use that for a ton of my projects and how I'm able to stop things without doing a ton more measurements and jumping in further. But Mitz found out when making the Vectric file for this and specifically that it would actually go down to where the radius matched up and bottomed out. So if you're getting the Vectric file for this, you'll notice that there is a very small channel that goes up here and the radius for the bulb bit matches up on the very top specifically right here. All this is still usable and we're including a separate SVG to be able to combat that, but I would have never known, which is really interesting and doesn't really affect anything at all, but <laughs> figured somebody out there might get a kick out of it. Now, this thing operates in three different ways. The majority of the time, one second, I use things like this, which is a very old project here on the channel. It's actually on CNC with me if you'd like to check it out. We use this silicone mat that is placed into this piece of wood and normally I have my bits and I just toss them down in there, no harm, no foul, everything's really good and I'm never worried about this thing bouncing into something other than another bit that actually could damage it. Now, months and months ago when I was first coming up with the idea of CNC with me, I realized that I wanted to be able to use three bits specifically so that people could make all of these different projects. I remember when I first started CNC machining, how difficult it was to be able to uh, think, oh, I need all these different bits to do all these different things. When in reality, I believe that you really just need three to be able to get a really good grasp on how to interact with your CNC machine. Then after that, of course, go ahead and buy some more bits to be able to do some cooler things. But this channel is based off of the bowl cut bit, the 60 degree groovy Ginny, and then the downtown Ginny. Now, the three different ways that people are able to use this are first and foremost, what normally people are going to be doing is just drilling a bunch of holes and then dropping their shanks into those holes. I specifically don't like that because I'm going to go down like this and immediately stab myself. So normally, I, like I've been saying, have been throwing things down into an area like this. So we've got just the catch-all area in the middle and then I'm only going to be using these holes specifically for me for the downtown Jenny so that I can put the cutting edge down and still grab right here. Of course, you still could put it in this channel if you wanted to just to make things look nice, but for me, I think that those belong right there. Now, if you have multiple of these bits, of course, you can move these vectors around and create just channels if you just wanted to put your bowl bits right here or if you just wanted to be able to put your V-bits. I had tried multiple ways to be able to create the V-bit and have like a little area for it. And at the end of the day, I thought the simplicity of just using the bull bit to carve that out and having it stand a little bit proud was worth it. Uh, obviously, change things around if you want these to be suited better for you. I have played around specifically with this file for so long, it feels so good to have it out and about. Now, this is just version one of what the HD Beginner Bits holder is going to be, and this is a fun one to be able to play around with. Eventually, I'd like to have a magnetic one that is on the wall, because this carbide is magnetic. And I played around with a few different versions about being able to place magnets down here so that it held on to the shank a little bit more. And I think that it was just distracting overall, especially if it had the capability of lifting up the entire tray as you're trying to grab the bit. Now, one of the things that I'm really excited about is the chamfering right here. We just took our 60 degree groovy Jenny and then we put it down 0.3 inches so that we could utilize the majority of the cutting depth that is allowed on the 60 degree groovy. And we ran it along the vector, not inside, not outside, along. And that was able to give us this like really, really nice chamfer so that it's just like the extra little detail being able to grab your bits out. I personally love it. I wanted to do that around the entire thing, but the more I was dealing with it, the more sharp these edges were getting, and I just didn't like that. So, of course, we've got these down here, and I ran into this little detail on accident, and I thought it would be fun just to be able to put a single bit up here. And I'm beyond excited to announce that that pole currently has power running to my shop and my power is currently on. I wanted to finish up Maker Month with this and being able to use the setup that I use for the entire Maker Month just for continuity's sake, but I'm about to spend the next three days putting my shop back into order as the last two months I've been slowly cannibalizing things 
and making them fairly useless. I've got a brand new table saw from Harvey Woodworking that I'm really excited about. One very specific project that I think everybody can appreciate even if you don't have a Harvey table saw and a lot of other things that I'm just really excited about getting back to. I absolutely love my Onefinity X50. It's what I spent my money on. It's how I got started with Onefinity. But sheesh, I am excited to get back to that Elite machine. There's just things that I just got used to that I completely forgot about this machine. And this was a nice wake up call to realize how nice I really do have it in the shop. And don't forget, the very first CNC with me member who makes this and posts it on cncwithme.com is going to be getting a $25 Ginny Bits gift card. And that is going to wrap it up for Maker Month. I've got some pretty cool stuff planned. And July is coming up too, which I think is going to be a season of giving. See y'all next Friday. Bye.